okay my streaming software is working so hello to anyone that will be joining me throughout today hello to anyone that will be joining me through Saturday and hi YouTube on our first live YouTube stream that is to commemorate me getting 3,000 subscribers hooray we will not have another celebration like this until our 10 year anniversary unless I explode in popularity so that's not gonna happen uh, today we're playing Orphanage Diaries, which is a support game for Orphanage. And Orphanage is a game that's gonna be releasing on Steam in about half a year. I kickstarted it, so I have access to this, I will have access to an alpha key. You know, fun stuff. So this is a visual novel, and it's about an hour to two hours long. So you know, let's just have fun, and then on Saturday I'll be doing a longer stream with Jurassic Park the game. Following what experts are calling a computer malfunction, the main stock exchanges have just cut off all transactions at midnight. The dollars exchange rate has suffered a new crash. European leaders have organized an emergency action committee to deal with. We must build a wall around America. That way they can't crash the economy. Thumbs up. Protests intensify against shortages of basic necessities and the control measures of the network. Actually, am I recording sound? Yes, I am. That is very good to know because sometimes I forget to do it and that would be really miserable. Earlier in the day, a policeman was found dead. Regular occurrence in a big town, I would say. The governor has just declared a state of emergency and a military enforced curfew urging citizens to be orderly and cautious. Over what? Over money crash. Then again, Manchester might need that if we win the World Cup of football. Because people will just get too happy, so they'll start trashing everything. That's how humans work. Emma, have we been here before? No, it was the floor below. You sure? Yeah, look, the closets are closed. Nobody else could have closed it afterwards. Duh. Weird. There are a lot of open cans in the sink, as if... Yes, as if other people can also walk into the property. Angus pauses. Did you hear that? No. Oh, hello! <laughs> Angus turns the flashlight towards the door. For a moment, a small humanoid shape stands in the beam, then vanishes. That wasn't Mr. Tiger! Nah, looked like a boy. But was it a man? I think he went that way. Emma points to the door at the end of the central hallway leading to the first floor apartments. You think he went in there? Also, side note, this is a very beautiful apartment for like being completely abandoned to a point that kids just can walk through the door. Ah, congrats on playing The Sims too. Best Sims out there. <laughs> yeah, I heard the door slam. It doesn't have a handle, only a lock. Hey, hey, anybody in there? Hmm. You know, it would be really weird to stand around and just kind of wait. I mean. They're children. They're not gonna demand my milk money. I hope not. Who are you? You first. Who are you? My name's Farouk. Is this your house? That is a really dumb question, little girl. If you're breaking into an apartment that is unlocked, likely nobody owns it anymore. Oh, that's it? I mean, 
It looked as an apartment building when they weren't standing in front of this door. <laughs> yeah, I live here. It's not a house, it's an electrical enclosure. Smart ass. Don't you want to come out? It's just a talk, we won't hurt you. Farouk knocks against the door. It's stuck! Don't panic, is there a handle on your side? No, there is no handle. Have you tried switching the door on and off again? Angus signals Emma to stay by the door. He turns and looks for something that will help him force the lock. Every time when people say the word signals, I just imagine that they're like doing like a proper military signaling. Like, go left, go to the door, prepare to breach. You know, we're gonna get you out of there. Say, Farouk, have you seen Mr. Tiger? Who's Mr. Tiger? He's my cat, but he's gone. Aww. Thought it was a toy, that makes a lot more sense. He's not your cat, he's just an old stray that stays with you because you feed him. That's not true, Mr. Tiger loves me because I cuddle him. I support Emma's opinion of keeping stray cats. The other guy can go fuck himself. And anyway, Mr. Tiger isn't old. I haven't seen him, but I heard him meow earlier. Maybe that was him. Yes, yes, it was him definitely. He is the only cat remaining after the giant cat eatery that opened the night next door. <laughs> Angus comes back with an iron bar in his hand. Let me try this iron bar against this iron door. <laughs> hey, that might be a good lever. We're gonna pull the lever, but you're gonna have to push as hard as you can, okay? What were you thinking locking yourself in there? You really got yourself into a mess. Mm. Well, it's definitely my fault. Because I did lock the door, so I was scared. <laughs> when I heard you guys, I thought it was the military coming back. So the military took your parents too. Do you really think we look like soldiers? I don't know, maybe we tried recruiting civilians and children-sized civilians. You never know. I just heard some noises and it was dark. How could I have known you were kids? Alright, we're ready. Let's go on three. Angus makes the count. Both children pull hard on the iron b bar. Oh yes, the door's giving everyone Vietnam flashbacks. Such a nasty door. And now, what happens if that door just like closes on them and then they're all stuck in there? After a moment, the lock breaks. The door opens wide and Farouk falls forward. Angus helps him get up. Okay, now tell us what happened. Ooh, progress saved. People took my parents away. They were like, forced military duty, bitch! And pulled my mother, you know, the, my one-legged mother away as she was like, clawing at the carpet going, no, I'm disabled, and they're like, we don't care. <laughs> I've been hiding. Baroque hesitates a little, then adds, is this a war? Uh, maybe? Calm down, try to tell us an order in detail. Emma sits cross-legged and pulls a chocolate bar from her pocket. We're just going around using the fact that nobody's here as a chance to steal everything. I found the whole supply of chocolate bars. Give him a break, Angus. She snaps off a piece of chocolate bar and hands it to Farouk. Here, you must be hungry. Chocolate. I've been eating canned tuna and crackers for days. I was going crackers! Can't tuna? That explains why Mr. Tiger came through here. Angus taps his foot and looks impatient. 
Emma glances at him, then shuts up. Farouk gobbles up the treat and speaks. One night, there were loud bangs at the door. Mom and Dad were worried they didn't know why. There were explosions and people screaming in the hallway. Well, maybe that's why your mom and dad were worried. Mom told me to hide under the sink and keep quiet. Baruch watched. I left the closet door half open. I was scared, but I wanted to know what was going on. Plus, the guy in front of me had pretty shoes. And look at that nice, calm, corridor explosion light. Doesn't that just look like something that you want to walk out into? Men came in and took Daddy out of the hallway. Mommy was crying. I wanted to go out to help her, but... Emma tucks Frick's hand. They exchange glances. Frick continues his story. I stayed hidden. They took Mom away, too. Heard Daddy yelling, we didn't do anything, we didn't do anything, we didn't crash the USA's economy, stop blaming me for stealing all that money. Then there was noise and Daddy didn't say anything else. Later on I found a piece of Daddy's brain on the floor. It took my Daddy too. Luckily Angus found me. Did our parents do something wrong? No, your parents didn't do anything wrong. I know, because I'm the oldest kid, so you have to trust me. Angus squeezes his fist and stares off into space for a moment. Tell us what happened next. Well, the closet door suddenly opened up. <laughs> better than finding a piece of daddy in the rubber as well. Uh, I don't know what Farouk did! Farouk, what did you do? <laughs> um, I imagine it would be intelligent to run? He was a soldier. He had a machine gun. I tried to sneak between his legs, but he wouldn't let me. I was about to scream, but he waved at me to shut up. He looked at me with this weird look on his face, like he was looking at a walking meat bag. He asked me if I was alone. I said yes. So he said, stay hidden, kid. And then he turned on his eld and yelled, it's okay, there's no one else. Closed the closet and left. And then what? I stayed there a long time. Four days and then I got bored. At one point there were gunshots. Finally fell asleep. When I woke up there was no more noise. And you haven't seen anyone since? No, no. I've been waiting for my dead parents to come back. I haven't counted the days, but it's been a long time. I was five when this happened. Is there any food left at home? No, I finished everything yesterday. I was trying to find food at the neighbor's when you arrived. When I heard you, I hid behind the first door I saw. Did you find something to eat? No, there was nothing inside. Just some stale stuff in the fridge. Figures, electricity was cut off in most of the blocks. Angus, we have to hurry. With the noise we made... Well, according to the sandboxy the simsy simulation -y game that's coming out, anywhere between 8 and 12. So anyone's guess. <laughs> Don't worry, if they're not here by now, they're not coming. Yeah, I know they're not coming, it's just that you might have spooked Mr. Tiger. Emma, you know we got to find something to eat. We got almost nothing left in the den. But... You promised me we would be looking for Mr. Tiger. I told you we'd look if we have time. Lynn said we still had enough for three or four days, so he can go back and start again tomorrow. 
Well, their parents are kind of dead and the building's abandoned, so they live there. So, you know, what would you do? They're like, must find bread. Emma, be reasonable. The others are counting on us. We have to bring food. That's our mission. We'll see later if we can catch that cat, okay? Emma's eyes fills with tears. Farouk attempts to draw attention to himself. I can look for Mr. Tiger with Emma! Really? You would do that? Yeah, of course I would! Cats make for excellent comrades and... In, just if your friends do not eat them because they got completely starved because you forgot to actually find the food, so you know, everything goes. That's so nice! Can you look for food on your own, Angus? We're off to find the cat. Meet you at the shelter after. Angus seems to weigh the pros and the cons for a moment, then he gives a serious look and says, Alright, would you be careful, okay? I'll meet you at the entrance of the building in an hour. If any of them are super weak and, and starved and you're like, you're diseased and dying and you, and you, and you know, go cookity cook. After we're done here, Farouk can come with us if he wants to. We're not gonna leave him here alone. Yes, sir! Come on, let's go. Farouk, if you wanna take something with you, now's the time. But hurry up, we already lost a lot of time and the others will worry about us. <laughs> it's not meant to be said in Chernobyl, I don't think, but... <sighs> Something to do with their country going bonkers because USA's money crashed. Silly Americans. Frog looks around the dusty living room. What? What could... What? That's that's gonna run out of battery and then there's no more battery. Uh Swiss Army Knight makes the most sense, but we are a kid, so plush rabbit it is. On the couch in his favorite stuffed rabbit, which had once been his mother's. When he lost his first cuddly toy, his mother gave him the worn plush doll and she's been holding onto it since childhood. You know, you could probably grab the rabbit and the knife. Like, the knife's super small, you can probably, like, chuck it into your po- no, Never mind. She made him promise not to lose that rabbit. Farouk confirms his choice. <laughs> Farouk's not a robot. Farouk takes a stuffed rabbit. Come on, hurry up! Angus is waiting for Farouk on the doorstep. Farouk takes one last look around, joins the other two children in the hallway, and closes forever the door to his home. Not like he could just like... Come over there a bit later! I mean, you'll know the way there! I know that it's dangerous, but the, the apartment haven't exploded! Yay, I think they're coming back! Shush, Asha, you'll wake up Benny. Are we sure Benny hasn't died? Are we sure Benny isn't made out of straw? Asha whispers. Angus and Emma, I can see them with their binoculars. Oh, and there's another boy with them. Huh? I don't know him at all. He's taller than Emma. Must be ten years old, maybe. Alright. Okay. Can you watch Benny for me? I'm gonna go open the door for them. Lynn heads for the door as Sasha moves to the cradle. By the way, Lynn? Yes, Sasha? Polly found the problem with the reconnaissance drone. Fucking hell, which one of you built the reconnaissance drone? One of you is like, Yeah, I'm from an engineer family. I was being taught university shit since I was the age of 11. Or 3. Whichever that was. Either way, I built complex machinery. Well, hey. It's the gyroscope that's faulty. It's blocking the whole system. I know this because I am very smart. <laughs> Shoot. Soren's out looking for parts in Sector 17. We, we, we calling the sectors now? I hope he brings you something to fix it. We could really use a drone. 
Emma, shoot this stupid cat up. We're gonna get spotted by a patrol. Great, actually. It's summer, really hot. I'm playing a game. I have ordered a pizza. Domino's pizza. That, that was good. Still have half of my pizza. Pizza makes me really happy. It's fine. We're almost there. Speaking of pizza, I hope these kids can find some. Oh, that would be awesome. Though how would you find pizza in a city that's practically dead? Like, you don't just have like a random pizza place going Yeah, everybody move that! I'm still cooking pizza because that's the life of my passion! Alright, Farouk, we'll introduce you to the others. Try to make a good impression! Of course Farouk will make a good impression. He saved Mr. Tiger! In Manchester, it's like... What, 28 today? On Saturday, it's supposed to be 32, which is stupid hot. Angus frowns in size. The kids sneak, sneak beneath the shutter and enter the shelter. Hey, Lynn, we're home. Lynn stares at Farouk. He was alone in a building in Sector 4. He helped us find the cat. I think you'll fit right into our with our group. Maybe after he settles in, he can help you with the organization, Lynn. Hey, what's your name? My name's Farouk. How did you escape, Farouk? Manchester's pretty okay. I've seen some very nice greenery. Not the city itself, but like the surrounding area. Though there is quite a bit of crime, and the moors are on fire, so that's an issue. Uh, Farouk was lucky. I've been lucky. My parents hid me in the closet. Soldier found me, but he didn't take me with him. You know why they left you behind? No. Maybe they're not all bad guys. It's not that they're mean, they just follow orders. You can ask Asha whether or not they're mean. An awkward silence sets in and then... Come on, we're not staying here. You must be hungry. You got some food. Applesauce. Soups. It's right this way. The group enters a large room. There is the gay quarter. By now they're a bit... closed in. Like all of the bars in the gay quarter are only accepting local people I was like what's speaking and it's like oh right that's me from my husband's computer I was like is that outside in one corner a table crowded with computer parts small cards and other components in the middle of the room on the floor there is a pile of food products of all kinds cakes cans milk and fruit juice we started sorting yesterday. Emma got sick with the fried fish. Wait, she got ill because of the fried fish? Or did she, was she like, ew, I was eating fried fish for 50 days, can we stop? Y yes, that happened in December. I'm pretty sure I didn't forget to mention. Pretty sure in some videos I go, my husband. Yeah. <laughs> I was just a little bit sick. I won't say it's something so bad I had to go to the doctor. But then it was alright. My stomach hurt and Mr. Tiger gave me lots of cuddles so I got better quick. Can you read? Rook shyly nods to his head. See, there are dates marked. We're writing down the calendar with Asha. Since they cut the net, it's the only way to know the date. Oh, and this is powdered milk. It's mostly Fanny. It's a good thing the tap water hasn't been cut off yet. Who's Benny? He is the son of my neighbors. He's really young. My mother kept him along with other children. You'll see, he doesn't eat much. It's like, Benny's our pet pig. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ash is with Benny, and Soren hasn't returned from an expedition yet. You'll see him later. The soldiers only came once, and we managed to avoid them. Soren threw stones at them so they could chase him and we could hide. W what about my parents? Nobody really knows. Soldiers take adults to camps. Asha, she was with her parents. She escaped, but she doesn't like to talk about it. Min gently takes Farouk by the shoulders and meets his eyes. That's why we can't be spotted. If they find us, they'll take us too. You need to stay safe here. Aww. That was a good sound effect. Asha enters the room. Hey Lin, Benny woke up. Asha, this is Farouk. He's coming to live with us. Hello, Farouk! I keep on mistaking the outside so noises for like in-game noises, so I keep on hearing my cat and I go, what? <laughs> I have to do go and take care of Benny, but you can come to my room if you want to talk with me. You should get to know everybody. Farouk hesitates. I like Tasha, and she might tell us what happens in the concentration camps. Farouk heads for Asha. Farouk approaches Asha's workshop. She is talking to herself while tapping on the tablet connected to several weird devices. She is a genius, you see, and somehow she's keeping this all powered despite the fact that electricity has been cut. No, 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 Polly. Generator identification numbers can't be downloaded. We don't have internet. Look, I'll call you back. Brooke is a little embarrassed to interrupt Asha. Um, Asha? She turns around and smiles at Brooke. Oh, hey, uh, what's your name again? Brooke is about to open his mouth, but Asha cuts him off. Brooke, is that it? Yeah, you're right. Polly just told me. He remembered it. He, was a, he has a very good memory. Polly? Oh yeah, Polly. My giant robot. Fucking hell, girl. Are you from Mars or something? Like, yeah, that shit started happening. I'm an alien shit. I have a trusty robot and I can power all of these devices to have no electricity otherwise. Don't be afraid. He's very nice. A giant robot? I know, I know. Polly is not a very good name for a robot, but actually his name is complicated, so he prefers to be called Polly. He's not a dangerous robot. He's designed to take care of children, and he helps us a lot here. Yeah, I know! To be fair, the game that I backed is supposed to be set after 2020, so it's like a slightly distant future, so they have slightly more technology than we do. Um. <laughs> Farouk imagines a robot. It's a robot. Alright, oh, okay. Nice to meet you, Polly. You're very tall. Polly is delighted, too. Polly was helping me start this stuff out. You want us to show you? Asha points to a nest of mechanical parts and cables. I act I don't think that Polly's actually there. <laughs> if Farouk has to imagine a robot, it means that Asha has an imaginary friend robot because she's probably a bit kooky and it's her way of dealing with it. Please, Polly, make some room for Farouk. See, that's a cable for the video signal. And this chirp card here, it comes from a transmitter. We can put that in the trash pile. What? Wow, you're really smart, aren't you? I'm the best in my class, you know. I mean, from my old class, of course. What school were you in? Oh, it was a special school for military kids. Are your parents military? Well, my daddy was. I don't understand why your parents were taken away too if your father was in the army. I don't know about that, probably because of my mom's work. 
She was working on very complicated robots. One to overtake the world and possibly they might have just crashed the U America's economy. But never mind about that. Polly saw my parents in the camp and he told me that mom wanted me to escape. You managed to escape on your own? I mean just with Polly? No, there were other robots. Robots specifically designed to help children escape. But they were all destroyed. Polly is the last one. Oof! I don't know, should I be nice and say that I'm impressed by her or should I go... Yeah, you a bit kooky. I'm gonna be truthful, you're a bit kooky. But robots helping children out of prison isn't really a thing, you know? Of course it is! Mommy makes all kinds of robots for your information. I know what I'm talking about. Asha, what's really going on in the camps? Asha is reticent. Farouk insists! That mental trauma has to come out! I would really like to know. It's just a big area with walls and barbed wire and they put people in it. You have to wait in line to get in. There are bad soldiers and evil drones guarding every corner. When you get there, people are separated. Everyone cries. It's really sad. I put daddy on one side, mommy on the other, and I stayed alone with Polly. They check you, ask a bunch of questions, and you're sent inside the camp. There's a lot of people. The food is disgusting, and people are really sick. Sometimes they lie on the floor, and they don't move. They're resting. Always resting. When they turn blue, they're still just asleep. Then you never saw your parents again? No, other prisoners took care of me, but mom did manage to reprogram some robots. They brought me messages. And I met a family of smart moles who take care of me. You had to be very careful. Sometimes people were so hungry that they dug in the ground and ate the smart moles buried underneath. In her messages, mom told me that she would get me and Polly out, and that I had to follow her instructions. Are you off your medicine, kid? I waited for the moment she told me about and did exactly what she asked for. And then the messenger robots were disabled and I didn't get any more messages. So how did you get away? With the help of the smart balls, of course. They got me through their tunnel under the wall. A.K.A. you tunneled, kid. A tunnel? Yes, yes! Balls live in underground galleries, don't you know? Well, I know, of course I know that, but the smart moles didn't come with you. No, they forgot their glasses, so they went to get them, but they didn't come back. And then, you know, moles are very, very discreet. Have you seen a mole before? No, I don't think so. What happened after the tunnel? There was a nice robot on the other side. He gave me mommy's tablet and promised to take me to a restaurant. Uh, th this is like... 30 minutes of some kid's PTSD fantasy to just like hide away the truth. Oh, people died right in front of me, so I imagined really smart moles with glasses. Oh yes, all of those very smart moles with glasses. But it was disabled then and the patrol was approaching, so I started running. Polly helped me hide. Afterwards, I waited a long time for the moles to come back, but Soren and Angus found me and I stayed with them. They were like, poor insane girl, we need to keep her in a safe place. Obviously, Farouk thinks it's a nonsense. Asha. There weren't really any smart moles or robots, were there? It was just people who helped you. Is that what you're saying? Asha looks away, staring, staring into the dark, ignoring the question. What are you going to do with all of this? I'm working of an, on a drone of ours. Soren brings me back the parts I need and I can connect it with a tablet and he'll be able to patrol around the shelter and warn us in case of danger. I'll help us to 
you're the shelter. Why, as a ten-year-old, would you ever spy on the military? Fuck knows. Lynn said that soldiers had entered here once before. A drone would be great for guarding the building. That's true, that's true. We were very lucky they didn't find us that day. Next time, if the drone is functional, we'll have more time to hide. But this is the fun part. Lynn also asked me to fix the old laundry machines in the basement. That's not really exciting. Farouk laughs a little. Yeah, but that's important too. I can help you if you want. Oh, very cool, very cool. Did you hear that, Polly? Farouk's gonna help us with the machine downstairs. I have to finish cleaning up in the workshop first. I'll pick you up before I go to the basement. I'll see if I can help others then. How am I gonna help with connecting washing machines? I know absolutely nothing about them. Did they like come with an instruction booklet? I... I'm doing monotone for most of them, so that can't be right. Uh, who do we want to talk with now? Let's talk with the... Not the asshole, let's talk with the girl with the cat. Farouk heads for Emma. Emma is doing something strange with pieces of fabric. Hey, Emma? What? What are you doing? Hey, Farouk! I'm making a blanket, of course. A blanket? It's supposed to be... Rectangular, you know? Oh, yeah? But why is that? Farouk explains it to Emma that rectangular... Pieces of cloth is great at covering you up. Technically, though, you could go with circular or human shaped. Because uh, it fits better into the form of a bed. Oh, uh, you're right. Okay. Either way, shouldn't you wash those rags first, Emma? Even if it's for Mr. Tiger? Yeah, everybody likes a clean blanket, I guess. Oh, yeah, yeah, all right. So did you look around the shelter at all? Not yet. I have to meet everyone first. Oh, what are you waiting for then? You definitely should go talk to Asha. She's so great. Yeah, I went to see her, but I wanted to talk to you. I want to hear about Mr. Tiger because he seems like that nice thing to happen to you in this really cruel world. How's Mr. Tiger? Alright, look at his big belly. Looks like he ate well outside. Where did you find him first? Here in the shelter? Yeah, I met Mr. Tiger when I came here. The others didn't want to keep him too much, but I did. You want to pet him? That's... No. Of course I pet Mr. Tiger. He doesn't look feral, really. Oh no, he likes hugs very much. But he still knows how to defend himself. Look, he scratched me once when I tried to wash him. Mr. Tiger really knows the shelter. I think he's been living here for a long time. Sometimes he tells me what it was like before. Does he know how to talk? No, come on, a cat doesn't talk, but he tells me in cat language. Okay. Anyway, Mr. Tiger told me that we should organize a Christmas show. What? A show? Is it Christmas even? <laughs> yes. Where we could sing and dance. That would be fun for once. You never done a show at all? Farouk likes shows very much. Morale is important in tough times. Remember that. Of course I do. That's a very good idea. Do you know any songs? Yeah, a few. I know dances too. I can teach you if you want. Great. Okay. Mm. Emma's parents? Were your parents taken by soldiers too? I think so, yeah. I mean, my dad only. Mommy left when I was a baby. Mommy was a whore. Angus picked me up a few days ago. His uncle had a shelter for him and he wanted me to come too. 
dad told me to go and stay with Angus. The shelter was really tiny, but he stayed hidden during the riots and explosions. Then we went back home, but there was no one left. You and Angus knew each other before then? Yes, yes! I've known Angus since I was a little girl. Our dads are friends. I hope our parents are okay. Me too. Soren says we shouldn't give a damn about them. Does, it, does that mean he doesn't care? No, uh, yeah, maybe? He says that adults can get drunk and it's up to us to deal with their maces. You mean their messes? Yeah, that's what I said. I, no, no, no. Saren, Saren might have had a terrible person as a family, but you should still care, you know, care about the rest. You don't have to use swear words to make yourself sound interesting. He smells a little bad. I don't understand everything he says, but he's pretty funny. Really? He gave me this. Look. He's teaching me how to play. He also has a bat and a ball. It's a little dangerous, isn't it? No, it's not. Come on! Okay, let's ask about Lynn and Nasha now. Have you known Lynn and Nasha for long? Not really. We found Asha here already and Lynn sometime before that. Asha told me her story. She's a little weird, isn't she? No, no, she's awesome. Come on, her story of an invisible giant robot. Emma shrugs her shoulders but stays silent. I'll see you later, Emma. All right, I see you later, Farouk. Ah, I think this is the part Asha wanted. Shit, shit, a reconnaissance drone. The drone turns its light beam towards Soren. Hit it with a bat and take it home with you. There is a squeak and then the recorded message starts. Soren knows it by heart. Citizen, citizen. You are in a district that has been declared a red zone under B-323. We have deployed a patrol that will escort you to the most secure checkpoint. Baseball bat sends the flying object violently to the ground. The red lead indicating that the equipment is in operation flashes for a moment before wrangling out permanently. Soren contemplates his mischief with a smile of satisfaction. Fuck you, pal! You're mine now! And another drone for Asha. In the distance, a siren sounds. Well, I better get out of here! The military will be on me on in any minute. Brooke has states. Oh yeah, we can still talk to people. Oh, the guy died into mission, just kind of cut off, and I'm like, <laughs> Where am I now? Hello, Mr. Meanie Pants. Angus is emptying his backpack, adding the food cans he has just brought back to the previous food pile. Wow, did you bring all of this back? I didn't think we brought so much food. We could have found a little more, but at least we brought back Emma's cat. The problem with tin cans is that you're gonna have to open them. Right now we do this with a screwdriver and a pebble, but that's not very practical. What you need is the good old UK tin cans with a little handle that you can just pull on and then they break off and you go, fuck. Shoot, I had a Swiss army knife at home, but I didn't think to take it. If I had known. It's okay, we can pick it up next time we go on an expedition. Did you want me to ask me something? Uh... What happened before I arrived? Did you find a shelter? <laughs> My husband opening a can made the cat jump. You made... You made Jojo jump on the floor. <laughs> yeah, we were lucky to find a shelter big enough for everybody. You've never been here before? No. It must have been a boarding house or an old hotel. We have water, rooms, and even a laundry machine in the basement. 
Must have been a piece of the old town from before the government restructured. Asha found the address with her tablet. How do you know all of this if the nets has been cut off? Asha has a whole bunch of old databases in her tablet with city maps and everything. It's been super useful and it's running on human powered solar system I suppose because it should have ran out of battery a long time ago. Okay, internet blackout? You know why they cut the internet? They want to prevent people from communicating with each other. There really shouldn't have been any people in that area anymore. And on top of that, if you had people on the internet, you could probably trace, you know, them a bit easier because they would be using an IP address and then you would know the overall area that they're in. Most importantly, they don't want the rest of the world to know what's going on here. So they shut it down. The net, TV, radio, even the old phone lines. They put up roadblocks everywhere and soldiers were totally isolated. Because whenever you attack the country in 21st century, if the country's just cut off, nobody's gonna ask any questions. But it's a double-edged sword because they can't locate us easily either. That's why they sent patrols. Yeah, but it's gonna calm down, you'll see. You can't keep an eye on everything and some people are still fighting in the district. On the other hand, they're going to deploy drones. What happened to the adults? Yours? They were probably taken somewhere in some kind of prison. Not yours? My parents were arrested last year! I don't know where they are! They weren't allowed to write or call me! You haven't seen your parents in a year? I went to live with my uncle afterwards. You did everything you could to see them. You see, they were sent to like a faraway prison? And now just like living like everything's normal, like yeah, we're in some sort of Mexican prison growing flowers and shit. Well everyone in here is like going to friggin' containment camps. But they didn't let us. The military? The army, the police, they stopped us. Uncle Johan said that we shouldn't make people aware of us, that it was dangerous. I still kept writing them letters though. That was very stupid of you. And now they got Uncle Johan, too. Who is to blame, kid? Why are they doing this? It's the government's fault. It's been going on for a while. Remember them demonstrations when they sent in the army and imposed a curt to you? No. They were too small. It doesn't matter. The important thing is that they're scared, you understand? They wanted to prevent us from revolting. They push the neighborhoods one by one to keep control of the city. The best way you're gonna keep control is if you put your citizens into a tight, scary place and start killing them off one by one. Trust me, I've been a ruler of desolate land before! They were afraid of a revolution. It would have been a war, you understand? Farouk doesn't understand this. But why can't they just leave us alone? We weren't in the war. Most people just want to live in peace. When others do something awful right in front of your eyes, you can't just sit there either, can you? This is a bit of a hard choice because it's like... Make a child soldier? Not make a child soldier. Make a child soldier. Not make a child soldier. Let's not make a child soldier. And wow, my cat just stole a piece of chicken. He actually like proper opened... Just what? Cat. You can have that, but the rest is my lunch. Not make a child soldier. 
We can't do anything. We're just kids. For now, we have to survive, Farouk. But we can't lose hope. Someday, maybe we can do something about all of this. What if everyone had fought before the military arrived? Couldn't have taken my parents away from me, could they? It's hard to say. They would have had a harder time getting into the district, that's for sure. Still, they could have used bombs. They would have forced us to damage the buildings and everything. But in the end, it would still have been up to us kids to pay the price for their nonsense. Totally not the parents that are getting killed in prison camps! Oh no! <laughs> How did you meet Emma? How long have you known Emma? A while. I even remember when she was a baby. We lived close by and her father was my dad's best friend. They knew each other from school. So it's kind of like she's my little sister, you know? She said it was because of you that she didn't get caught. Yeah, that's right. I got her just before the military arrived and we hid in my safe house. We were really lucky. And now it's my turn to look after her. Farouk is very worried. This can't be easy. I wish Aunt Uncle John had been here, that's for sure. But it's not that hard to keep an eye on Emma. You know what you need? You need an Uncle Jonathan. Because he's like a Terminator with like full red eyes if he ate too many people. So he could just swish, 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 swish. Yeah. She's resourceful and brave. That's true, that's true. Frankly, she has strange ideas sometimes, but it's so reassuring to have her here too. Sometimes I think that she's the one who actually watches over me. Yeah, she told me about a Christmas show. You see what I was saying? Weird ideas. I don't know where she's going to get all this, but maybe it's not such a bad idea. It will be good for everyone to have some time off and just daydream. Rook agrees. I think that's such a good idea. I'll have to talk to the others. Hello, Yoni. 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 Yeah. That's really hard to pronounce. You have like two of those not consonants in between. Yeah, it's not gonna be easy to convince. You wanted to ask me something else. No, I'm just gonna talk with the others. Farouk hesitates. There is just one more person to talk to, but he doesn't know if you wanna. Farouk heads for Lin. As Farouk approaches Lin, a loud noise occurs. Yes! Yes! Those things! <laughs> On the other side of the wall, we hear a broken voice shouting, Hey, anyone here? A tall guy with a scary face walks into the common room of the den. Brooke is intimidated but realizes that the guy is not much older than he is. He's just very tall for his age. But the baseball bat resting on his shoulder is not reassuring. He's staring at Brooke with astonishment when Lin bursts into the room. Soren! Soren turns his attention to Lin. She seems pretty upset. We hear crying on the other side of the wall. What is it now? How many times have I told you not to make any noise because of Benny? Oh, piss off, huh? You're not my mom. Totally ignoring Lin, Soren walks up to the food file, drops his backpack and picks up a soda can. Then he sits on the old sofa and takes a gulf. Let me breathe for two minutes and then you can explain to me why the hell we have a new mouth to the tip of his baseball bat is pointed towards Farouk. We met Farouk during an expedition today. He was alone in Sector 4 building, so we offered to join us. During the expedition... And you brought something to eat? Angus tightens his fists. We didn't find much, but we did find several apartments to search next time. What do you mean next time? Why didn't you take food right away? It's because we had to find Mr. Tiger too. Soren grins. Huzzah, the saviors of the world! Not only did you lads bring no food, 
But you show up with a new guy. Jeez. Of course saving the cat was the priority. Clap clap Angus, well done. And congrats to you too, blue kid. Soren glares at Farouk. Hey hey, you're being a smart ass, but you haven't found anything to eat either, I can tell you that. I'm not done yet, wait till you see what's in my bag. Soren smirks and points noche like me at his bag. Angus intrigued, squats down to open the bag. It's filled with chip cards and mechanical parts. I don't know what it is, but it's pretty heavy. Oh, for fuck's sake, my cat's now trying to get my pizza! Jojo, you already had a piece of chicken, no. Top quality drone pieces for that crazy girl. Asha approaches and examines the material. That's pretty good. I think we can use some of these pieces. What do you say, Polly? Asha seems to be l listening to her robot's response. Yeah, Polly tells me we should be able to finish fixing her own drone. I don't give a shit about what Polly thinks. Soren turns his attention to Farouk. So what are you gonna new do with the noob? It's not a summer camp and it's no fucking Mother Teresa made. If you don't have anything to offer us, bam, your ass is out. Uh... Fuck off! <laughs> like... I can survive on my own! Rook looks at his feet and says nothing. Like we damn need another autistic kid in here. Soren approaches Farouk in a stranding way. Wow, well, you want Mommy Lynn to make you some baby bottles too? You're not going to fight, are you? Fight? With that midget? I'll crush him, you mean. Farouk proudly strains his back, holding his chin up high even if he's not very reassured. You won't do anything to him. We need him anyway. Why the fuck would we need him? Why? To clean your shoes? Don't make yourself dumber than you already are. If you really want the reconnaissance drone, you have to understand that this is very complicated. It's a team effort. And who's gonna help me? You maybe? Oh please no, I'm getting a headache from your nerd stuff. That's what I thought. Frook, you'll help us Polly and me, won't you? Yeah, of course I'll help. Awesome! Asha, to begin with, you have to carefully take all that stuff to the workshop. Brooke and Asha heads to the office, arms loaded with electric components. Soren makes an exacerbated growl and goes back to rest in his cushions. What is his problem? You can just fuck off. I'll be the new alpha male. Farouk and Asha set to work at once. Asha is confident that she can get results with the pieces that Soren brought back. And from that picture, she already has gotten results. They work hard for several days, but the progress made is still unconvincing. It's full of shit. At least it's flying, right? It's, it's flying is no use if we can't give it orders. Farouk watches the drone silently. Mechanically, everything seems in order. The problem must come from the program. I can't get through the security to change the behavior routines. What does Polly think? He says we'd better drop it for now and focus on fixing the laundry machine. Good idea! I'm going down with a kid and a tablet. Okay, I'll catch up with you later. Don't worry, Asha. You can keep working on the drone if you want. Should be able to handle it myself there. Thank you, Farouk. Are you from a mechanic family or something that you're like, yeah, washing machines, no problem. I've seen this loads of times. The laundry lo room is damp and poorly lit. Asha hates coming here and Farouk can relate. He represses a chill, then connects his tablet to the main generator and unlocks the repair kit. All right, here we go. There are footsteps on the stairs. Must be Lynn with the news. In the dim basement light, her eyes take time to adjust. 
Rook? I'm right here! Lynn approaches and places a plate with a pair of small sandwiches and on one of the washing machines. Asha told me you were in charge of the machines. I thought you might be hungry. I brought you something to read, too. Lynn put some science magazines next to her sandwiches. How did she make science sandwiches? Like, if this has been going on for, like, months, then you either have to be stealing bread from, like, the military camp, or you have to be stealing bread from, like, the military camp. I found this in one of the rooms. I thought maybe it could help you since we don't have the net. Lynn suddenly looks worried. Everything alright? Yeah, I mean, no, Saren is very upset. I think he's leaving. Farouk doesn't give a shit about Saren. Saren can fuck his little ass off. Farouk shrugs. He's in too much of a hurry. What he asks Ash to make. It's not easy. It's gonna take time. He has the character of a pig, but he brings back a big part of the food when he goes out on an expedition. If he leaves, it won't be easy for anyone. Soren is like that, though. He needs to keep moving. He's full of energy. He seems so sure of himself. It's strange. It's almost like he's glad all of this happened. Yeah, I think you're right. You know, Soren was already living on the street before all of this. He never really had parents. For him, it's as if Brawl joined him in the hell he was already living. He's the one who found me and Benny after after the raid. I was terrified, unable to move, I didn't know what to do, I was completely overwhelmed. Soren shook me, made it clear to me that I have to pull myself together. Without him, I don't know what would have happened. I would have just sat on the floor until I have died from hunger. Benny could have died. I get it, but that doesn't tell me what we could do to keep him from leaving. Me neither. Without his help, we're gonna have trouble getting new people into the shelter. I wonder if there aren't already too many of us to get out of it. Brooke doesn't know what to say. I'll leave you to it. I'll see you later. Brooke nibbles on a sandwich as his tablets run the complete diagnostic of the system. These magical tablets that are powered for like half a year. <laughs> the screen tells him it will take some time. That's what the screen literally says. It says it will take some time, kid. He turns his attention to the magazines. Brooke grabs the first one from the pile, flipping through lazily as he begins on the second sandwich. One article, however, draws his attention. Artificial intelligence. The limits are pushed further with the Polyphemus program. The article was written a few years ago. It's an article about robotics genius who developed a high-performance AI. The article concludes with a brief interview. The developer is a young woman who seems particularly committed to ecology issues. According to her, technology must help humanity in overcoming its great problems, particularly the management of the planet's resources. The interview is illustrated with a photo of a woman in white blouse who could have been Ash's much older twin. Farouk drops the magazine amazed. Huh. Polyphemus. Polly? Asha, do you actually have an invisible robot? Or an AI on a tablet? Which I think would have been a bit more likely. Asha turns around and shows a big smile. Wait, where's the drone? Asha's smile widens. She turns her tablet over to reveal images of the city streets streaming on the screen. Do you manage to get it flying? It's just a test flight. Just a test flight? Asha, you did it! Can we fly it? Yeah, but we don't have to. Look, we can give it instructions here. Awesome! Hey, right there! Isn't that Soren? Yeah, careful. Get too close and you might get hit with a bat. Two children laugh together. Little by little, we transform the hideout into a real fortress. Other children wanted to join us, but we couldn't welcome everyone. We had to be careful. The more resources we took, the more likely we'll get noticed. We're living a little slow. You see, if it was me, because of how I managed Frostpunk, it's like... Can we have some refugees in here? Sure! Everyone's welcome in the apocalypse! Let's all live in this building, 
Let's be 200 of us. That's like super dangerous. We're consuming super a lot of food, but never mind. <laughs> Soren got tired of it. He left one day, slamming the door. Angus followed him. Then Emma in turn left to join them a little later. Thanks to our surveillance drones, we discovered they had joined in our groom in Sector 24. But really, we don't have much time to think about them. The most important thing is that they stay well hidden. We found a copy of Program Polyphemus hidden in Ash's tablet. It's our responsibility now to keep it safe. The most important thing is that it's not destroyed. Is that older me? How many years was it? We've been trying to launch it for months without success. We still have so much to learn. But this program is the hope for a better future for anyone but us because we're stuck in this hellhole. Better than that rotten world the adults left us. A hope. That's all we need to hold on to and continue creating that artificial intelligence that that will not backfire. We will not start Terminator at all. Oh no. During the adventure, you struggled to preserve Farouk's innocence, that You protected him from danger whenever possible. This brought Farouk closer to Asha, who defended him when Soren challenged him. Ah, Huggy Kitty! I like how it goes. Oh, oh, oh. Achievement unlocked. Achievement. Uh, but it's not on Steam yet, so I can't actually get them. Yeah, that sometimes happens. I once had a pregnancy with Sims that she had twins, and she had almost no motive drops at all. And I was like, what? That's unexpected, because normally the pregnant ladies are like, I'm dying from hunger and sleep deprivation every one hour or so. Kens! Kens! Oh, wait, wait, you could have just like not had the drone? Oh! I suppose me staying with Asha and being like mechanical shit It's like many endings. I kind of just assumed that the drone just has to happen, but I suppose not. So yeah, anyways guys, that was my today's stream. It was supposed to be short. I cannot wait for the actual game because it's gonna be Sims-like and they said it's gonna be at least like 10 hours of content of you like sending your orphans out to like reconnaissance missions and shit, so it's gonna be really interesting and that really got me hyped for it. So yeah, that wasn't a bad novel, though it doesn't actually set up the world. It just kind of throws you and goes, anything might stick. I'm seeing purple unicorns. Well, I suppose it could have happened. Nobody told me that this world doesn't have purple unicorns. You know. And the art style was nice. I kind of enjoyed playing it. Um, on Saturday, I'm gonna have a really long 3,000 subscriber stream. It's gonna be from like, gonna be like from 2 p.m. daytime, UK time, and we're gonna have fun in the Jurassic Park game. And I think that one's actually voice acted, so I will need to use my throat less, which is good because it can take between six to ten hours to complete. So thank you for joining me today, and I hope to see you on Saturday. <laughs>